Good day folks, here's an extension of my last video about how you could use the optical channel to funnel the signature of an AC sine wave. Essentially a way would, would electrically would be the superconductive equivalent of transferring the sine wave without loading at all the generator generating it through the optical channel. So you don't need a very strong optic. All you need essentially is enough to have a very clean signature through the main carrier, which is the regular light and you're set to go. So reg in a regular solar panel, you have the regular ambient DC, right, which is already driving it, this one at 12 volts, okay? So as you see right now, I have the 12 volts output going here in a series, charging first a capacitor and then go into an LED and then going into the primary of a high voltage transformer. Now, normally this doesn't make any sense because this is a DC system, but essentially, of course, everybody would know that a capacitor is DC isolating, right? So being a super cap, this takes its time. It could take 15 minutes to charge at the solar, right? But it's a maximum of a 2.7 volt and it's hovering pretty well drained a little under a volt right now, just for the demonstration. So I have it disconnected here and I could connect it to complete the loop. So essentially what I'm getting at is traditional electrodynamics wants to say that this would be a closed loop DC, but I fail to see it that way because the capacitor, no matter what, is DC blocking. What we measure as closed loop current is the displacement effect as the dielectric polarizes, but this is a pure field pumping effect. It's not an electron flow like they'd want to tell you. So to throw that out the door right now that you do not need hardcore electron flow through a closed loop to generate electricity. And that's what the capacitor does. And Maxwell did a correction with that where you can, but the issue with that is people treat it just as a mathematical balancer and not a real physical thing. But the whole idea here is this could really be physical. It could be real power, not just a mathematical way of clearing a, a, a inconsistency as a correction like Maxwell did. Just, oops, let's just put it there quietly and the math dries, but we don't really use this. But the point is, it's not phantom. You could really use displacement and we do every day without really acknowledging it when we use a DC block and capacitor. It's just in a regular capacitor of a few UFs, that's almost instantly, it's, it's a one shot deal. Once the capacitor is polarized, then it literally, there's no displacement at DC going on unless there's pulsing AC or DC, which then the capacitor just becomes a passive element. Phase slightly, but either way, it's no longer a DC effect. So just wanted to put that out there, but because we're using a super cap, it allows us to experiment with the displacement field without using fancy switching like we normally would have to with lower uh, farad capacitors. We're able to sustain it and watch it do its thing, okay? So essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna connect this now and you'll see from the ambient so I'm connecting here and of course my LED turns on. But essentially what's interesting is this lamp right now is not being powered by closed loop DC. It's in the loop of the displacement field. So we're actually charging this capacitor right now. So know before someone says, oh, it's the capacitor actually going backwards. No, 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 no. This is less than a volt and this is feeding it with 12 volts of ambient. So it's actually charging the capacitor very slowly, like maybe 0.1 a minute but it's still charging it up and we're getting the displacement effect and it's always and it's always happening you see it's not dc but acts like it now what's interesting here is we're looping this and of course on the scope here you'll see it because i got the light here acting as a switch indirectly because it modulates its ac and the solar cell gets that now i've got just a halfway diode here just for rectifying the half wave and charging the capacitor. So that's why you're seeing a, a like rather steep there on the positive side because I'm letting one, it's not a full bridge in other words, but it gives you the idea that we're getting this AC. So essentially what I'm getting at is all you have to do is engineer the Q you need in your LC circuit. And as long as you have the structure of the waveform at the frequency you need, you can step it up theoretically to any voltage you want without loading in our case, this could be replaced by a Joule Thief driven circuit. So what you're getting at is the Joule Thief is no longer directly loaded, even through trying to use the back EMF, the inductive kickback. 
you get the load, you get the resistance, it's hard to get a pure potential, even at higher voltages without draining the input source. You can do it through the optical channel, and then this acts as a transducer. Just engineer the cue to your needs and it won't stress the load. Now the optical only has the job of supplying a clean sine wave. That's why we can be very far away here. We're not driving it with direct current like, like the traditional solar panels would want to do. I'm going to kill this now just for a moment to show you a difference. All right, so we can skip the displacement. So we can skip the charging capacitor and go like this. This would be DC, just series DC. So what we're getting now is the DC side, but notice how it's a lot less bright just directly, traditionally. You know why? Because now we're actually loading the solar cell in a closed loop. So we're adding resistance. So the cell is no longer as efficient and we're loading it. Therefore, it doesn't provide that pure displacement field, which wasn't loading earlier because it was just a side effect from charging the capacitor. But now what's interesting is you still get the passing of the sine wave, but at much lesser because we're loading it. What happens is the pure potential in this case becomes the signature of the carrier. The higher the potential, the stronger the sway of the sine wave so you can get more. But it's not their only requirement, but it, it's something that makes a difference here. And what we have here is the capacitor connected to the voltmeter and it's charging not drastically, but it's 22 UF and it's charging from the sign, okay? Now, of course, this is just to show you we don't need the capacitor, but we can take advantage of the displacement current because the displacement current becomes basically your version of a superconductive path to the AC side of it without resisting. Because you see right now we're resisting because we got a traditional load in a closed loop. So we're bringing down that pure potential, which means we're kind of hiding that sine wave in there lower in the amplitude. So that's why here on the output, we have a little less. So to not have the loading effect is what I'm saying. You don't need to load a DC, use the capacitor to isolate it at DC. And all of a sudden, you know, the displacement, let me show you that there's much more light. Look, that's, that's direct. And when I put it on the capacitor, it's much brighter because we're using the displacement field. It's hard to catch on the camera here. So this is right here, direct. Sorry for the flickering. And this is, see, you see it, they're much more. But now we're no longer DC, it's the displacement current but it still carries very strongly because it's a field effect, that signature, and we're much stronger. You can see from the negative side here. So just negative 11.6 V. So that means we're shooting 11.6 on the positive side. And look how quick now this is charging because we're no longer offering resistance and we bypass is what I'm saying. It's like a superconductive path. No more resistance across the AC loop. The transducer receives it direct and give, converts that to real power. This is real current. Piggybacking through the optical channel. So this is, should charge all the way up to about 12.2, 12.4. But this just to show you right now. And of course, we don't need this. This will work off ambient light. It's just if I shut it off, we'll lose the AC signature so let's show you that we close the light we still have here because we have the ambient believe it or not and from the sun over here so it still gives you some because we're still charging the capacitor at dc but essentially now this is going down because we have no more ac sine wave envelope around there so essentially, my, my scope is also null. Nothing is going on here. And I'll just actually short the capacitor to show you. We'll short it out. We're going to short it out here. So we should see zero, right? I'm going to wait a few moments. Now I'll go a few mi microvolts. 
millivolts because of course the memory effect but it should settle at around 80 or 90 because there's nothing feeding it right now there's no um, displacement field so it's just to show you we're getting the DC only right now so I want to show you the scope it's basically dead but we're still getting DC here so here it is settled at 61 62 the meter is actually slightly loading it because we're not passing that sine wave so let's put that this is interesting that and this is an analog light bulb so no no digital switching so this is 60 hertz more of a smooth waveform but it'll still do it check this out see the light goes brighter now and not as much but now we do have a four volts half pulse so there's 4.2 volts coming in and look what's happening here. We're getting a charge now just from the 60 Hertz from the analog light bulb. So your DC and AC are on separate channels, but combining as separate as a common node over here. And this responds to the swing, the envelope, and its Q determines the potential out here essentially without loading obviously the source that's generating this is really wasteful because it's a 100 watt light bulb but my point is just to show you that it doesn't care whether it's a 100 watt light bulb or a 100 milliwatt led what matters is the the imposing that signature on the existing ambient light wherever that may be coming from so the ambient light gives you the dc and you just impose a, a sine wave through a even a reflected medium at very low trigger and it won't affect through your Q over here how high you want your potential so here we're still going at 1.2 but this is very lossy I rather just do it with an LED over here and it's actually quicker because the LED carries a stronger signature at higher frequency and it just goes really quick from there 14 volts but yeah you know here's our dc here doing the displacement current charging the capacitor but the displacement current carries the ac signature for free one doesn't load the other you see and this is what i mean i can short this let's short it and it doesn't affect the dc side because we're on with a transformer right so let's short this out I'm shorting it out. It's hard working with one hand, by the way. So now I'm shorting the each side, you see, nothing there. So the capacitor here is obviously, I'm on the other side of the diode, so I'm not directly shorting the capacitor, just the prime, a secondary side here. But look what happens here. See, we're not affecting the DC side at all. So I'm gonna disconnect this and I'll see if I can see to show you that there's no flicker. See there, I just disconnected it. I'll connect it again. You could hear me tapping it, right? No, no flicker. So it's completely decoupled from the DC side. Do what you want with the DC side. What I'm getting at, and instead of charging a cap, you can charge a real battery with this and take the displacement field that piggybacks your modulation on a secondary system, engineer the Q, and there's your pure potential turning into real current. Here it is. But this is just an example, very slow, but just to show you the concept. This is very significant, I believe, in understanding everything even Don Smith was doing. So what's very interesting is I'll show you this. I've got the meter here, the magnetic field, and we're getting a real, see that? Real magnetic field, dynamic magnetic field, the kind that actually generates, that triggers the flux, which gives you, this is what I'm getting at folks, is this is real current being generated with a DC system. You shouldn't be having this with DC. So I'm gonna show you it's coming from the lamp. We'll shut the lamp off. We're still getting DC, but without that AC superimposed on it. 
Look what's happening now. Nothing. Zero. No, no flux switching. No nothing. So what I'm getting at is you get your flux switching for free, which doesn't load the input however you want to do it. And that's where quote unquote over unity effects could start happening because the output here is real current. Once that flux gets switching, it doesn't matter how it's being triggered. It's following that envelope. So let's do it again. This is very important. That's why I'm repeating myself. So I turned the light on. There it is. There's your real flux. It doesn't care that there's DC on there or not. And there's quickly the capacitor 22 UF charging, which should hit around now we're getting about 16 volts. But this is real flux, this is real AC switching. As far as the transformer goes, it's giving you real current on the output, charging real devices. And it's sneaked it through the optical channel, not affecting the DC side whatsoever. But as you noted, when I tried to load without the capacitor, just the DC side, the lamp goes much lower because we're directly loading in a closed loop. We don't have the closed loop with the capacitor. It's directly filled. 